Welcome to our new version of the football banquet. Appreciate you joining us here today. I just want to give out a couple of thank yous to all the people that were involved in our football season. Uh, obviously, uh, all the spirit moms that helped us get things organized from the freshman level clear up to the varsity level. You guys do a tremendous job. We pre appreciate your support there. Uh, always want to thank uh, the moms in the crowd and obviously our wives for putting up with us all season long. You guys do more than what, uh, what we recognize, and so it's one of those things where uh, we appreciate what you guys do. Uh, shout out to Brian Haas and his staff as usual. Those guys do a tremendous job of getting our athletes healthy and ready to go for the next game. Uh, always say thanks to the best assistant coaching staff in the state uh, for a bunch of young guys that have come together here, kind of a new group this year. Uh, we're pleased to death with uh, how we elevated our um, uh, football team from the beginning of the season, obviously, to the end of the season. And then the last thing that I always talk about is thanks to the players. You guys put a lot of time and effort into it. We've seen it all summer. We've seen it for three or four years. Uh, we've seen it every day in practice or Friday nights competing. Uh, we just appreciate what you guys do for our program. You take us to the next level when it comes to Kearney High and Kearney High School Athletics. As we always talk about, I always want to get into the Bearcat football realm of things. We always talk about the first thing, which is our motto. And our motto was pretty easy this year. It talked about this. It was adversity does not build character, it reveals it. And we've been through a lot of adversity whether it was the quarantine in the spring, late start in the summer, uh, wearing masks all summer, just a complete disaster when it comes to trying to get your program ready to go for August. And then to start out with the brutal schedule that we had, you talk about adversity, start out 0-3, and these guys never quit, and we appreciate that aspect of it. So obviously all the adversity that, that we've dealt with, it definitely revealed what type of character we have, and this team has tremendous character. We set high goals and expectations for the year like we always do. Um, I think the key part is one of the main ones that we talked about, how can we develop team unity uh, to the, to the ex extreme? How can we build that team unity to supreme unity to allow us to play at the level that we did all season long? And we definitely were able to do that. And I appreciate the seniors on setting those expectations and those goals uh, throughout the entire year. Our off season to start clear back in the second week of June, might have been a, one of the best summers we've ever had. Our attendance, everybody's in town, so that helped out for seven on seven, for strength and uh, conditioning, uh, for speed and agility, for all of our testing stuff. That was fabulous at the time and effort that we put in, and I think we broke all sorts of records when it came to attendance and attendance uh, percentages. Shout out to our sophomores. Those guys went seven and one this year. Uh, Coach Cherry, Coach Crop, and the sophomore coaches, we appreciate all that they did for, for the sophomore program. Um, I wish those sophomores could have had a little chance to uh, rub shoulders with the old guys at practice, but due to the quarantine and due to the COVID stuff, we kept the sophomores pretty much uh, separated from our football team this year. And so that looks, the future looks great from that perspective. Our JV had a fantastic year. We got quarantined for a couple games in there with a, a 5-0 and record. So with the sophomores 7-0, excuse me, 7-1, and one, and the JV guys going 5-0. Uh, and oh, uh, What a tremendous start as you analyze things, uh, obviously, for the future. We talk about uh, winning district championships, but with the uh, NSAA making a lot of decisions, uh, one of our goals is to be district champs. And uh, there was no district championship, so I usually talk about our district and our district play towards the end of the season. And then I think the preseason part that you always analyze, that's as tough as it gets. You start with Lincoln Southeast, who is ranked number five and six to start the season. Elkhorn South, you go to Bellevue West, um, or excuse me, uh, Omaha West Side, then you go to Bellevue West. Uh, those three teams to start the season was definitely a difficult uh, schedule. And then you go three weeks, two weeks of being quarantined, week four and week five. And uh, we could have thrown in the towel and said, hey, let's get ready for the winter season. And these guys made the mindset that, hey, we're going to go compete. We're going to finish up this season the right way. And obviously that mindset made a big difference for us uh, in our playoff run. Nothing better than getting into the playoffs. And uh, when you get an opportunity to play four playoff games, um, I don't know if I would have agreed uh, with anybody that would have said we would play four, four playoff games this year. And again, things changed. So we got a little bit of an earlier one because of week nine. Had an opportunity to play Coach Martin and his uh, Lincoln Northeast Rockets. And what a great scenario for us to play one more game at home uh, in front of our home uh, fans and in front of our home uh, uh, rowdies. And then you have to go three games on the road. You have a tough comeback win against Gretna. Use a lot of time and energy in order to win that football game. And then obviously we go to the third round there uh, in the quarterfinals and, and have probably one of the biggest upsets in, in Class A playoff history. 
And uh, that night will be remembered for many, many years. Um, the competitiveness, the belief that we could get it done, and then for us to finish it up in overtime against the number one team in the state uh, was a, a memory that we'll never forget. And then you finish up, obviously, with uh, Elkhorn South. And there's a reason why I thought those guys would be preseason number one or preseason number two. They had a fantastic group coming back. And so for us uh, to survive and play those guys to a 10-3 score, pretty proud of our effort. A lot of energy against Gretna. I thought we'd put a ton of energy into Bell West. We did a great job getting off to a good start against Elkhorn South. The game was going exactly what we wanted. And at the end of the day, we just kind of ran out of gas. And so uh, it's one of those things that we're proud of our athletes on the commitment they made to get to the state semifinals when things looked a little bit bleak at the, end of this, at the beginning of the season. And so for us to uh, get into the state semifinals was uh, obviously a huge achievement. Yo, what you telling me? What you telling me? What you telling me? Uh, what you telling me? Yeah, I got stacks to the right of me. I got Mikey to the left of me. Huh? Wait. <laughs> what? <laughs> look, look. Uh, what I? Hold on. What they talking about? What them folks talking about? Huh? Look, huh. buddy gon' get that, get that, get that, get that Send shots, make him get back on that Chit, chat, chit, chat, riff, rap, riff, rap My they in the dap He talking hot, but he ain't on what? I got like 50 rounds up in this clip If yeah. I know the jump, I'll bleed the fit yeah. Cause mommy still gon' love a kid Got to lock me up and give me a bed huh. I'm like, the pigs The judge like, why you acting like a I said I'm moving like I'm Stephen Vick My lawyer like, puppy, why you breezing? I said I pop up and feel amazing yeah. Shoot for the stars, I'm a foundation huh. Look at the money I'm raising She wanna Hold on, she stuck in the book, have a way for arraignment She get the edible arrangements That's the only form of pain, so they snack And after I snack, I'ma blow her back She like, Bobby, you so crazy, huh? I told her, wine on me, baby, hold on She wanna stop, she wanna cause she know who we are These dirty ain't here no bro When they come up, I got good luck She wanna grip that, lick that, put a stick at Freak my d where her lips at She going on gas, no chit chat She going on gas, no chit chat Hey, bum 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 Here come that boy with the drum If I pull it out, then that boy gonna run If he want the smoke, like the beef out his bun Hey, I go dumb, dumb, dumb Air it out, leave him slump, slump, slump What they say, they know that I'm Gucci Pull out with a pump, pump, pump May God be with you all.
Yeah. Yeah.
Carney just beat Bobby West. Carney just beat Bobby West on a two-point conversion. 41-40. Carney. One of the things that I look forward to is creating our record book, analyzing it, revamping it, and seeing all the things that we have done from uh, this season uh, compared to all the other teams uh, that have come through Kearney High School. And uh, we're to the point now, this is the uh, 45th year that we have kept uh, these records. So 1976 is when all these records start. And as you analyze some of the team stuff, with the schedule that we have, it's pretty difficult for us to get on some of those team records. And, but we do have a handful of individual guys that we wanted to talk about. Uh, first of all, Preston Pearson. Preston Pearson is gonna be ninth all time on a single season total offense. And you're talking about passing, and you're talking about rushing, and so you're talking 1,832 yards worth of uh, total offense which is ninth all time. And there's been some dudes that have come through here uh, that are definitely on that list. Also, Preston will be 15th in career total offense. Uh, so between his junior year, a little bit of playing time, and then obviously his senior year, uh, 1,937 yards. That's a, a huge accomplishment, being 15th total ever career-wise when it comes to total offense. Uh, Cade Miller is gonna be third all time for receptions as a junior. And we've had a lot of good junior receivers come through our program. And so Caden Miller will be the third all time from that perspective. And then at the end here, and again, there's going to be multiple juniors and seniors that are going to be on the individual uh, top 10 list. Um, but I'm looking for kind of the all time, all career ones uh, for Preston and, and obviously Caden. The last one I want to talk about is going to be a school record. Gabe Van Winkle had five fumble recoveries this season and that ties our school record. And then he has six career fumble recoveries, and that's gonna tie our school record uh, that has been here since 1976. So congratulations to Gabe Van Winkle for getting his name uh, up, on the, up on the record board. Lastly, before we uh, turn it over to kind of our team awards and our letter winners and all of our academic all-conference stuff and all-conference team, I always talk about three things that um, I'll always remember about this football team, and it was pretty easy. It was, sometimes it's hard to write you know, three out of three when it comes to uh, what do I remember about each one of these teams, but this year it was really simple. Uh, the first one is adversity. I've already talked about that. They had adversity all summer, had adversity all fall. fall. They were quarantined. They had a tough schedule. They had to be on the road for three consecutive playoff games. You can't get any more adverse than that. And so uh, the adversity that these guys faced and faced it straight on will be a memory I'll never forget. The intelligence of this football team. You get into the all-conference stuff, and I looked that up the other night, that out of our uh, 22 starters, 11 on offense, 11 on defense, 18 of those guys are on the all-conference uh, hack team. And that's pretty impressive. This group had uh, great intelligence. They were easy to make adjustments with. We had to make adjustments upon adjustments upon adjustments. 
And more importantly, they are terrific in the classroom. And so anytime you have that type of intelligence, it's easy to get along with. And the last part that I always remember is, is I wrote down the words community pride. And uh, I know our community did not get a chance to watch these guys play, but at the end of the day, I would have a million people in the city of Kearney that would say, man, your guys were fun to watch. And as you analyze our team, our team played hard every single game. You talk about the tenacity, you talk about the aggressiveness, you talk about um, the in energy, the enthusiasm. Uh, this team would have made our community extremely proud. And then you go and watch the uh, Bellevue West upset and how many text messages and phone calls and emails that I received from people in the community that watched the game or listened to the game and just had so many great things to talk about our athletes and uh, our players here in our football program. So uh, they fought through adversity. Uh, they're very intelligent, great intelligence uh, throughout the entire career, their entire career. And then the third thing, obviously, is the community would be extremely proud of them. So uh, appreciate you joining in for kind of our unique uh, banquet here. And uh, hopefully you enjoy the rest of the awards here uh, on this video. Thanks for your time. Have a good weekend. Bye.
When your back's against the wall You mess with one man You got a song Fighting back them butterflies It's calling in the air All right, yes sir We want the ball It's knocking heads And talking trash It's slinging mud and dirt And grass It's I got your number, I got your back When your back's against the wall You mess with one man You got a song The boys are fall Where the boys are born Where the boys